What is up everybody and welcome back to Joe's Garage for another Subaru Saturday. This could be the video that finally gets me to the finish line to be fully partnered with YouTube. I'm super excited about it, so let's try and make that happen guys. In today's video, we're going to be dropping the engine cradle from the 2.5 RS and in order to do so, we need to move these two jack stands somewhere else to support the car. What we're going to do is lift it up and try and get the jack stands underneath the pinch weld and see if it's strong enough to support the car in the air. Even though it's incredibly rusty down here, I think it might be able to hold up the car to do what we need. After we get the engine cradle out, we're going to be building a completely custom frame that will hold the car up and possibly be able to roll it off the lift so we can start ripping the the rest of the parts that we need off the car to finally start getting to the rust and fixing the problem that we have with the 2.5 RS. Without talking too much, thanks for tuning in. Let's get it done. So the first thing we have to do is take these two large jack stands. We're going to get them positioned underneath the car and then we're going to try and lower the car and see if we can get it up in the air off these smaller jack stands. So I'm able to get <clears throat> the jack stands directly under this bracket here. Hopefully it's stable enough, and I believe I had it jacked up there previously. We're gonna lower the car onto these. It'll lift the cradle off these jack stands, and then we're gonna go ahead and put them on the pinch weld and see if that will support the car. So as you can see, we got the front jack stands off of the engine cradle, and we don't wanna go too crazy because the back is not so secure. And the way that the car is tilting, it's kind of frightening. So what we're gonna do is grab these jack stands, and we're gonna put them under the pinch weld and see what happens. We'll have to go just a hair higher. I think I might use the other one. This one kind of has a groove. Inside the groove, yeah, I like that better. That's what we're gonna go with right there. Okay, and we're gonna do the same on the other side. I'm gonna leave the camera here. The passenger side is actually a lot worse than the driver's side, particularly on this pinch weld. I'm gonna leave the camera here so you can watch this side, and I'm gonna keep a close eye on that side because the lift operation is on the passenger side, so I'm able to kind of watch. But we're going to see if this is actually strong enough to hold up the car as it's supposed to. Wow, it actually had zero issue. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. It's really solid here and I don't I don't think it's denting too much. And I think I'm going to have to cut some of this out to replace it anyway. So we're good. That's safe. We're back up in the air off the big jack stands. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the passenger side really quick too. So here you can see this side is a little worse. The pinch weld is completely bent and it is sitting on this part of the rocker. It's bending it a little bit, but it's enough to hold it. I still don't love how the rear end is jacked up. We're going to have to address that, but that's something we're working towards. Now that we know we have it in the air and it being a little lower is so much easier to work on, we're actually going to tear down this piece of suspension here with the lower control arm, the hub, and anything here. And then we're going to be able to drop this cradle. And that's the main goal for today's video. So without talking too much, let's just continue to work, get some of this stuff out of our way and start wrenching. Pretty much the main purpose of me getting it jacked up on the pinch welds was so I was able to pull these plates and get those jack stands out so we're able to work underneath the engine bay and get this cradle out of here and i'm super excited get the cars up in the air now that we have that all out of the way we're going to move the big jack stands i'm going to go ahead and grab these and roll them out of here Now just take a look, we're easily able to get underneath the car, a ton of space to work under here. We're gonna be able to get this engine cradle out. I might even put the jack stands there to hold it while I bring it down. I'm not sure how heavy that is. I'm going to remove a couple of the pieces that are attached to it before I try to drop it and just get everything pulled down so we don't have any issues. And then that engine cradle is coming down. Now I know I'm able to drop the engine cradle and most of the suspension at the same time, but to make it a little easier and a little lighter weight because I am by myself, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the suspension components here. We have to get the hub down, the caliper disconnected, which is the uh, brake line here, the tie rod, 
the control arm. I just want to bring that down anyway because it is about 10, 15 pounds and we got to get this sway bar disconnected. So I'm going to go ahead and get this knocked out really quick and then we'll pick the camera back up. The very first thing I'm going to remove is the caliper itself because it's extra weight on the hub and we can get this right out of the way very easily. We got a 14 millimeter and I already had the banjo bolt loose. Get this out of here. Pull that brake line down so that's out of our way and I'll go ahead and put the banjo bolt right back where it belongs so we don't misplace it. Then if I'm lucky, the slide pins and the caliper will just come right off. We've had it off in the past. Everything should be fairly loose. Nothing better than that. Let's see if this will come right off for us. Very nice. We got our caliper. We'll set that aside. Now we need to break the caliper bracket free. Get that out of our way. Hopefully we're able to... Oh yeah, it's still nice and loose. That's great. Everything's going to come apart really easily. Because we've had the suspension taken down before when I was working on those control arm bushings before we parked the car. I'll just go ahead and swing this like that. Put this one back in. Go ahead and get this bottom one. Sweet. And that's that. We can go ahead and set this aside. Next, we're going to go ahead and try and get this tie rod in broken free. I'm going to use my impact gun for this. That was way easier than expected. Hopefully it'll pop out for us. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a hammer in a second. While I have the gun set up, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get the ball joint also taken down. That came off very easily. Set the ray gun aside. Now I will go ahead and just thread this on very slightly and give this a hit with my hammer. I do have a brass hammer I'm gonna use. That was some penetrant. Let's see if we can get this tie rod broken free also while I'm here. Nice. Tie rod's off. Cool. I think I could probably get this on here and pry it down. Put a little pressure on it. Nice. There that goes. Tie rods off. Go ahead and put the castle nut back on. And let's try and get that uh, ball joint broken free really quick. Let's just go ahead and give this a couple more taps. Maybe it'll come free. And if not, I'll use the sledge. So much like when we were working on the rear suspension and we weren't able to get some of the pieces off the control arms or the hub assembly, what I'm gonna do is just drop the control arm and I'm gonna show you guys how that'll work. If I can get the sway bar link broken free, which shouldn't be any issues, I'm able to just remove the control arm here and in the back we have those two main bolts and one of these was the one that was broken on the opposite side, but if I can get all that free, the entire hub will essentially just come down with the control arm. I do have to remove this wire, which we're going to do that really quickly. But after that, the whole hub will come down. Rather than me trying to beat the crap out of this hub or this ball joint that's not coming out, we're just going to drop the whole control arm. And I think that might be a little easier. So next thing we're going to do is remove the sway bar link and then break these control arm bolts free and get that out. Here we go. Very nice. I know I've never had that apart and it came right out. This car loves me. We're able to just remove this side because it's connected to the sway bar. We don't really need to remove the side that's on the actual control arm because that can just come down also. Nice. 
getting right out. Let's go ahead and put this down like that. And now we just have to break free the control arm bolt and the heavy duty bolts that are underneath. Okay, so I've got my half inch wrench, 17 millimeter, and a box on the other side to hold it. Let's see if we can get this free. Nice. As you can see, I'm pushing away from my face, like everyone suggested in the comments. Let's see if we can get the auto wrench on there now. Here we go. Okay, and this is a lot cleaner than the other side was, but this is where it broke. So I wanna be very careful with this. I really don't wanna have any issues. Oh gosh, yikes. I might have to get the extension, the persuasion bar. So this is what we call our persuasion bar. You've seen me use it in previous videos, but it just slides on the wrench nicely enough to extend it so I have a little bit more leverage to push. Nice. Oh, very good. Let's go for this one. This is the one I'm a little worried about. I'm grabbing the heat because I am not going to break that. No siree. I have no clue if that's going to work. We're going to go for it. If not, we'll go around the side and really heat it up. Okay, it's working. I could tell it was getting tight, so we're gonna reheat it again. It was going. It started to seize up on me, and I really just don't want this one to break. I'd be pretty upset if this one broke. Okay, it's nice and red hot. Let's see if we can get this thing moving again. I'm gonna go put it on the impact gun. my god I can't believe that I didn't stop there because I knew if I would have it would have probably seized again but my ears are ringing from that impact just slapping that bolt but I am just completely shocked that it came out because I swear it was getting so tight I could just tell I think that thing has like 800 foot-pounds of torque the snap-on or something crazy like that I don't remember but that took so much out of me just using the impact gun to try and run that out. But boy, am I happy it came out. So we're gonna go ahead and get the other one off and then we're gonna bring this control arm down. And I'm super excited about that. I did forget that the ABS wire is hanging on here and I probably now I beat it up. But we'll see if we can just get this out really quick. Wow. Let's see 
we can get this one. Okay, now we can bring the entire control arm down. So it'll be a little interesting how this one comes down because it is heavy. I don't have anything to hold it over here. And yeah, it's just gonna be a little bit interesting. So we're just gonna go ahead and get this one off. And that's how it should came down. That one came out really nice compared to the other one. And then I think if I go ahead and move this, I can kind of just, if I have any strength left in me. Oh my, where's my hammer? Okay. Nope, that ain't happening. If I run this off, it might be able to uh, bring it out. Here, another two. Pull that out, and let's try and get this control arm out of here. Oh, I know that's gonna be a little heavy. Go ahead and hit that with the hammer, I bet. Okay. That's just beautiful. Set that aside, and I'll go around and grab that out of there. Voila. Okay, so now that we have the control arm down, you can see what I was saying. We just removed the ball joint and the hub with the control arm. It all came down as one. And I'll get this separated later. I'm just not too worried about it. I'm not sure what we're gonna have to replace here to get the car running again or while we get it to drive. So we're just gonna go ahead and set this aside over here out of our way pretty much in the parts junkyard. I literally have 95%, maybe just 90% of the parts here next to the car out of our way. I had them underneath the car, but of course I need to be underneath the car to work. So, you know, you just gotta work around with what you have. Now that we have that out of the way though, really we're this close to being able to drop the engine cradle. There is a few things we have to disconnect, which I'm gonna show you that right now. So, part of the cradle, and I'm not sure about this, but the steering rack is pretty much braided inside of the engine cradle. And correct me if I'm wrong, guys, I keep calling it the engine cradle. I know that you guys are going to know the actual technical term for it, but it kind of cradles the engine and that's what I'm going with. But we have the steering knuckle here, which has to be taken down. And I believe it's a 10 millimeter and this U joint here will separate and that removes it from the steering rack itself. This will come down. I'm going to get this um, power steering pump also disconnected. I'm just going to remove the lines. It looks like a banjo bolt and just a rubber spring clip line. We're going to get this off because I think it'll just be kind of willy nilly in my way if I leave it up there. Other than that, I think we're ready to drop this little engine cradle. So we're going to go ahead and get that knuckle removed, the power steering pump off and drop this thing. So we are literally this close to becoming full-time partners with YouTube. And what that means really is that anything that we earn from your support or the content, AdSense, whatever it may be, we're gonna be taking that money and dumping it back into our projects. I know that I'm really excited about it because I've worked so hard for this. And I know I even have my dad motivated because he has the E-Type out and he's starting to work on that actively all the time. And that's just another project that we're gonna be bringing to you guys as we go down this road. If you're able to make sure to watch this video all the way out if you've made it this far because any little bit of watch time really really helps support the channel and that's what I'm missing to make that final finish line. I just wanted to make a special shout out to my men Brendan Cosby, Elad Fitz, and Tim Farnham. Thank you so much. It's your guys' support that really motivates me into getting more things done to this car to bring you guys some awesome content. So without talking too much, we're gonna continue to work. It's pretty late at night. It's like 11.30, 11.45, and I wanna get out of here before one o'clock in the morning. So we have a few more things we're gonna do before we get out of here. Let's get this engine cradle down and get to the next step, guys. Thanks for watching and let's go. Okay, so it's a 12 millimeter here. Let's see if we can break this free. 
it should be no problem. That came out nice and easy. We can get that moved again when we need. Let's see how easy it is to remove this power steering pump. All right, so what we have to do is grab it with a crescent here to hold it, and then maybe we're able to hold that tight and break it free. <coughs> nice. Wow. Nice. Don't you love when stuff comes apart? I'm telling you guys, this car wants to be fixed. Let's see if we can just grab it. Break it free. All right, it's broken free. Let's see if we can just yank it right off. Ah. Okay. There we go. All right, let's get this power steering pump out of the way. All right, so what we're gonna do now is put the big jack stands back underneath the engine cradle. So. If I don't have the muscle to hold it up, these might grab it. If needed, I do have the heat and I do have my persuasion bar, but I've been soaking these since the entire time I've been working on the car. So I feel like they're bound to break. And I've been soaking them with the JB80, which is the best rust penetrant there is. So let's see what we got. <clears throat> well, we're gonna heat it. It didn't feel good. If you ask me, I didn't like it. Try that. Nice. The heat is amazing. I'm gonna grab my auto wrench to make that much easier. But I know for sure that one's coming down. Let's go ahead and try this one before I heat it. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, I just don't think it's worth it. I know I could get it. Let's just go ahead and heat it to be safe. Of how long I heat. Nice. Let's go do the, ow, oh, oh my God. I hit my shin on the jack stand. Oh, oh, oh my God, ow. Oh, why did I leave that there? Okay, let's just heat these up. I don't have time to play. My shin hurts after that last one, boys. I can't even believe that just happened. Ah. That's plenty hot. Let's see if we can break it free with this guy. Not gonna take it all the way down just in case. Let's heat the other one up and get this done. Oh. 
Ooh, this one's a little tighter. Okay. I don't know if you guys could see, but as soon as I brought that one down, the whole thing started to lower. And that's why I left the first one a little loosened in there so I could uh, bring it down slowly and maybe get my hand in there and hold the thing before it comes crashing down. Let's just go ahead and bring this side down and see what happens. It's still nice and tight. Let's go to the other side, bring it down, and maybe I'll be able to hold it and balance it while I bring it down. Slowly bring this down. hammer up there gonna hit me in the head I guess I should have looked for electrical connections like I said earlier it doesn't look like there is any I think I might just be able to pick this up and out of my way I don't know how heavy it is oh seems pretty heavy actually can I stand here well that's cool All right, let's get these jack stands out of my way. And just like that, we got ourselves an engine crate. Let me go set it aside. Oh, oh boy. All right guys, so we have the engine cradle here. And at a first glance, it actually looks like it's in great shape, which is a super bonus. That means I'm going to be able to reuse it. I don't know how or what condition the rack is in, but there is a torn boot on the rack under here. You can just slightly see it, I think. Uh, yeah, you see it there. I'm not sure if I did that earlier or how that happened. Rubber does get old and peel. But overall, the cradle is looking nice. It has got some surface rust and some of the paint is starting to uh, do that common rust, flaky, whatever. But I think we're definitely going to be able to clean this thing up, strip it down, take all the parts off of it, and reuse this cradle. I'm super pumped about that. It's just one less piece that I have to replace, which is just great news because... If you guys have been watching, you know I'm trying to keep this as cost efficient as I can. So I'm super excited about that. And I'm just beyond excited that we got this down because it was seriously pretty much the last major component that had to come off of the car uh, to start really getting to all the littler things. And then the rust, we have that little cross member there. We've got all the lines and electrical that needs to come down. We still have the interior, a lot of things. We're going to get to that in just a little bit, but there was one last thing that I wanted to attempt to do before I have to go home. It is 12.30 now, and I really just don't wanna be out until two in the morning. I want to try and get this crush bar, which we addressed in the last video, getting the rear bumper off, how bad this was. A few of you let me know that there's a difference between the USDM and the JDM version of this bumper beam, and it's a clear choice what we're gonna go with when we replace this because like you guys said the usdm one is heavier it was for insurance reasons and i'm really not going to be driving the car enough to worry about all that kind of stuff when i do get the car on the road it's going to be more like a uh, show car and i know i probably will drive it more often but i think i'll be a little more careful than um and you know i guess what i'm trying to say is accidents do happen but i don't care about all that i'd rather just get the jdm one it's lighter weight, it's better for the car, same cost, we're going JDM, but we're gonna get this bumper beam off. I really wanna see uh, what the rust looks like underneath that. And that is really the last little bit of work we're doing in today's video before I take off and close this with a couple things I wanna address. So because I'm not sure, and I'm only going off of how the front bumper beam was mounted, it was two of these here, and there's a hidden one back here, you can't really see it, 
because of this little uh, exhaust hanger bracket. I'm not sure which of these hold it in. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start pulling each one and hopefully by the second or third we find out which it is. But I'm gonna be heating this up because you can see it is really rusty back here and I do not, absolutely do not wanna break anything. I would just be too upset with myself if I did that. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab the heat really quick. We're gonna heat these up and see if we can get this loose. Now my hope is that it's just the first two in this order, one, two. That would make everything a lot easier. Just go ahead and heat this bad boy up. You know what, I might get this out first. I really don't want to torch this hanger. That's what we're gonna do. There's no really good way to heat this though. And I'm almost certain that it needs it. Just a little bit of heat should do. Let's go ahead and try that real quick. My long gear wrench, see if we can break this one free. Oh, that's wonderful. You can just see how much the car is shaking. I really want to get this thing jacked up a safer way. And now you can actually see both, I believe. One, two, let's heat it up. See if we can get it out of there. I'd really love that. Have my wrench ready. Now, previously when I would heat these up, I would attempt to heat the frame and it really didn't do what I wanted it to do, so from there on forward, I would continuously just heat the bolt and I wasn't having any issues with that. So that is the reason why we're heating the bolt here because I've had some luck doing this in the past. Right, that should be plenty hot. We're gonna try this. I still can't believe I broke that one subframe bolt. Let's go ahead and heat the next one and see if that one will come for us. I'm going to grab the impact just in case. Way too much. Okay. That should be plenty hot. this down here. No, I can't. Son of a gun. Still had the 17 on from the front. be plenty hot. Let's get it up there. Oh goodness. Gotta go back to the half inch. Not thrilled about this. Unfortunately, after cranking my butt off, I think I gotta get these other two out also. 
but I'm here, so let's get it done. I want this off. I want that bumper beam off. I forgot how much energy it takes to turn a wrench like that. It's crazy. Hopefully I can get my impact on this one after I break it free. It should be plenty hot. Okay, let's try and use this this time. Let's go ahead and give it a hit. I think that might have been it. Oh, that's a lot of rust. I don't know. Might as well get this other one take it down also. Just it. Come on. Oh my god. I can tell it's getting late at night. I'm getting frustrated. you guys think this charcoal canister is in my way what are the chances that it's any good on this car because I have half a mind just to cut it and you know what personally I just don't think these are gonna come so I'm just gonna cut it but let me know what you guys think if this would have been a good charcoal canister or not definitely leave me a comment about that but we're just about to trim these backsides off so I can pull it down because I think I got to get all three of these out to pull the bumper beam and I really wanted this thing off. So what I'm gonna do is heat it up anyway, pull the first two, and maybe we get lucky. Uh-oh. What are the chances there's fumes in this EVAP canister and this heat blows it up? I'm always doing something risky, I feel like. We're so close to being done for the night. Just really wanted to get this finished. Okay. That's one. This one's a real tight fit here. I hope this fits. And I gotta get that last one pulled, son of a gun. Okay, well, I'm cutting it because I wanna get this last one out so I can uh, drop that bumper beam. I don't think it's gonna be any good anyway, but let's just do it. We've got this last one, and then I think this bumper beam's coming out. I got that one extra hot. Oh, I don't even know what that bracket is. 
Time to get the bumper beam out. Just take a look at me. I'm literally just covered in rust. It's disgusting, it's in my mouth. And the car just continuously gets worse and worse with rust, I think. I'm gonna set my camera up really quick, get this bumper beam out, and then wrap this video up. Who thinks it's coming out? I'd be a little disappointed if it doesn't. Jeez. That broke it free. There we go. There we go. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Gotta love it. Seriously, the rust underneath here isn't that bad. I'm actually pretty okay with that. You could see later, I'll show you guys a better glimpse of this. My flashlight literally just died my headlight. But inside the actual frame itself doesn't look too bad and overall the rust on this backside isn't exactly what I thought so I'm pretty pumped about that it is really bad once we get a little bit farther over and I have no clue why it's so bad over here or why that bumper beam is just so completely gone but that's what it is that's what it is that's what we're working with I wanted to be done a little closer to 12 30 Maybe one o'clock, but it's already 125. The place is a mess. I have parts and tools everywhere. I haven't had the chance to clean up. And uh, it looks like I'm gonna leave it that way for tonight and I'm gonna have to come back tomorrow. I won't get that in a video, but it's part of the process too, is cleaning up. I feel like a jerk because you know I share the place with my dad and I hate leaving it like this, but I just can't do it tonight. I'm tired, I'm so hungry. I wanna go home and eat, but I'm just super excited guys. We got the engine cradle out. We got that bumper beam off. We're seriously just so close. We are just so close to finally getting to the rust and doing all the little things we need to do to get this thing fixed and then start putting it back together. I feel like we're just right around the corner. I mean, it's only been a month and a half, two months that I started taking it apart and we're almost down to just the shell. I mean, we are so close and I don't know really how to do all this it's not that i don't know what i'm doing but i've never torn apart a subaru let alone a car that's rusty and in this condition so yeah this is all a learning process to me and i'm really just enjoying it like i said in the previous videos this car really likes to be taken apart i mean it's really working well with me even though it's so rusty it's been so nice things are going great and there's one more thing i'm gonna do before i wrap this video up and we're gonna jump right into that right now so the very last thing we're going to do in today's video is go over a little list of things that I started to put together to get done on this job or just kind of like to keep me on track because every day I think of something new and then I forget it or something else comes up, I start working on a different part of the car. So what this is gonna do is just give us some bullets that we can kind of attack and work around from and I don't have them in any particular order. I believe it was Elad Fitz who suggested a whiteboard or some piece of board that I was able to write on. So I thought this was good enough for now. It's not permanent, but it's something we could work with. It's just a piece of uh, masking paper we would use with some magnets on the door. But what my top one is, is the goal is January 2025. I think it's doable. Honestly, I think that's doable. It's actually only a couple months away. You know, we're already halfway through July, but I think this is gonna happen. Things to do, research. You guys have been helping me a ton with the research. I love that. Dissemble all main components, pretty much there almost, so we can almost check that off. Clean, strip the car, and like I said, I don't have these in order, but clean and strip the car, you know, it's just like removing all the parts, getting all the grease off, all the, all the little things that we need to remove and clean. That's kind of what I mean with that. We gotta go over to here, because I kind of, as I was going, like I said, my mind jumps around. Remove all electrical. I wanna get the wiring harness and all electrical out of the car. I really just want a shell here that we could work with. Remove the interior, that might come before the electrical, but we gotta get the interior pulled so I don't damage anything while I'm working on it. And maybe we'll spray the inside. Um, then we can go back to remove all rust because you know we gotta get the rust out. That's one of the main things we have to do is just the biggest thing. I should probably put a star here really quick. 
is remove all rust because really that's the main issue with the car as it sits is the rust we're gonna fix all the rust to the best of my capabilities i'm probably gonna be doing all the work all the rust uh body work and paint really paint is separate than the body work i could really do the side body work later on but more importantly i gotta do like undercoating and the undercarriage because once I put all of the suspension and the drivetrain and everything back in, I really won't be getting to the shell like it is ever again. So we have to get the undercarriage taken care of, get it undercoated, which is a huge thing, paint the firewall and the engine bay. I really want that clean engine look when you go to open it, since we have it stripped anyway, and we're gonna take all the things out. I just thought of another one in my head is make new lines. Make new lines, and that's fuel, and break so there's another one that's a really important one because all the lines are really old and crudded up and another one on here i guess i have a few more uh really quick we'll hit them would be rebuild and refresh engine we're gonna tear it down and just do the common things that need to be done on a subaru engine like the heads new gaskets head bolts water pump timing belt uh you know just the average stuff probably get the engine uh hot tanked so we're working with brand new components, maybe replace the rods, I don't know, something like that. Rebuild the engine. Uh, a new clutch and flywheel is a must because the one that was on the car was slipping. That's one of the reasons why I had to park it. Also, find a donor car. That's huge because if I could find an Impreza, and I guess it's up to 2007, I'm able to just take those parts and swap them onto this car, which would be incredible. And there's one in the junkyard at Pull Apart that I might go take a look at and see if I'm able to get the rear subframe off of because I really need that rear subframe to move forward when I get there because we're, we're nearing it every every day we're getting a little more done and every Saturday I drop you know we're, we're getting closer to the finished goal so that's everything on the list for now we're going to leave this on the car if you guys can think of anything I should add to the list definitely leave me some comments guys if you've watched this far in the video I love your support Thank you for always watching. Super Saturdays has been an awesome success for the channel, and I want to keep that going. So thanks again for tuning in, and I'll be catching you guys later this week. I have some sweet 350Z content to drop, about three videos lined up that I'm going to try and get done midweek. And yeah, that's some interesting content too. It's a little different than Subaru Saturday, and I, I'm curious to see what you guys think of that. So make sure to tune into the channel midweek, and if not, I'll catch you guys in the next Subaru Saturday. Thanks for watching. Peace out.